Hey guys, Curtis is on vacation. So Donkey Kong is taking over. It's a really bad impression of Donkey Kong. Okay, folks, just a heads up. I think this video is going to be a little different from my other videos. I don't know if this is going to be that funny or goofy, but uh, some of them popped up on my uh, radar recently and I, uh, I wanted to talk about it because what I've learned is shocking to say the least. So two years ago now, I made a video on a guy called Russell Hartley. <sighs> Excuse me. You can go watch that video if you haven't already, but uh, here's a brief summary. He makes super misogynistic TikToks while wearing suits. He thinks women live life on easy mode because they have boobs and butts. He compared having women that you sleep with to having horses in a stable. A stable is a rotation of women that you have available to you that you can hit up and they can go on dates with. He does weird, sad, motivational speeches in empty hotel conference rooms. And he also started an online course to teach men how to talk to women. And since my video, he's been dunked on like a million times for being an absolute poop goblin. And after my video, he made a response to it. And then when I responded to his video on my podcast, he deleted his response video. So, huge W for me on that one. Russell Hartley, more like Russ L. Hartley, right? Hold that. But ever since then, it's been pretty quiet on the Russell front. I've uh, I've hardly looked him up at all. But a few weeks ago, I was tagged in a TikTok from a creator named Arson. And this TikTok was them saying how they were reached out to by a random woman on Instagram. And they were saying that the agency that they're with called Siren Agency what? is like the best agency in the world and she should sign with them. So she messages me saying, that she's a part of this company, this agency, and they want to talk to me. They promise a bunch of like pretty crazy stuff, which we'll get into in a second, but I just wanna show you the last part of this TikTok. Let me send you this article. That's when I find out Siren Agency, one of the co-owners, Russell Hartley. Uh -huh. Guy who says that women doing spicy content is living on easy mode. Bro, isn't that fucking insane? Russell Hartley. The guy whose entire persona was like roasting women for having an OnlyFans is now profiting off of those same women that he made fun of. That's like if Greta Thunberg like just started a private jet company. Like how are you gonna do all that, but then do that, right? Like it's so fucked up for him to be like, yo, dude, women have it so easy. All they gotta do is show their boobs and they got a bunch of money. Me, on the other hand, I have to work hard to trick them so they can give me some of that money that they have. And it's so strange because he doesn't advertise this anyway. The only thing he advertises is like a shitty cologne that he's selling, which I fucking never want to smell. But if I go to his Instagram from one of my many burner accounts, you can see that he follows the Siren Agency on Instagram. But Arson goes on to say in this TikTok that Siren calls themselves a free management service, which is red flag number one. Cause hey, what is that? But she also says right after that Siren wanted to take 50%, five zero, 50% 50 of the money that she makes from her OnlyFans. So then it turns out you have to give them 50% of your earnings on your spicy site. Which is a lot of money for a free management service to take, I gotta admit. I feel like anything more than zero is a lot for a free management service to take. It's almost like a free management service doesn't exist because that's fucking stupid. I don't need... It's fucking stupid, it, those don't exist. So once I saw this TikTok, I uh, I knew I needed to take a closer look. I needed to do a deep dive. I needed to put my goggles on and, and do a big front flip cannonball into some research, okay? I wanted to find out more about the Siren Agency and what they're up to. So I searched Siren Agency on Google and I found their website, so Let's take a look at that really quick. Okay, right off the bat, <laughs> I noticed they're doing the same thing that Russell Hartley did on his website uh, that I showed two years ago, where they just put news outlets on there that they have not been featured in because you can search Siren Agency and then the news network and then just nothing. And you know what? Call me crazy. That shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> like, could you imagine if every actor's IMDb page just showed every movie they haven't been in? That'd be a fucking nightmare, dude. Nightmare, dude. That'd be a fucking nightmare, dude. Why am I saying it like that? That'd be a night. I'm a nightmare, dude. Like that would be a logistical nightmare. I Except for Michael Caine's IMDb page, I feel like his would be empty because he is in every single movie. Yeah, we got this thing that says, our clients enjoy 300% cost savings, 450 million followers, 400% increased engagement. <laughs> like just, 
Just throwing numbers out. Just being like, yeah, 300, 400, a million, I don't fucking care. I love how they also got a bunch of just random fucking stock photos on the website. I guess this photo right here is the live reaction of someone seeing that they're gonna take half of your income. Mm -hmm. All right, they got a contact us page and then they have a privacy policy. Let's take a look at that. So right off the bat, I like how they left the uh, suggested text prompt from whatever website design service they used. <laughs> It's nice to know that they're paying attention to the to the details, you know, especially when it comes to people's privacy. So yeah, all in all, it's um it's a lazy, ugly website that they probably threw together in an afternoon on some site like Squarespace or some shit like that. And that is frustrating, but then again, it's pretty on brand. Like Russell Hartley looks like like if like a, a generic website template like became a guy. Just fucking boring unassuming, unoriginal. He, like, he's just a fucking guy. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I wouldn't even notice if he was, like, sitting on my head, like, doing a drum solo. I just wouldn't notice. That's how unassuming and boring he is. And this website was super shitty. It didn't, it barely gave me any information. So I reached out to Arson to see if they would be down to send me any screenshots they have of the conversation that uh, they had with Siren Agency. And Arson came through with the fucking heat, okay? That wasn't a, <laughs> that was not an Arson joke. I was just saying was good. there's good stuff. Okay. So they start off the conversation by like sending Instagram links to the people who are signed to Siren right now. And they also sent an LA weekly article that talks about uh, how awesome and groundbreaking their influencer marketing company is. Fucking slow news day, I guess. At Siren Agency, the goal is to empower clients to continue growing their brand and treating it as the business it deserves to be. Owner and CEO Chase McInear McKenneer knows firsthand what it takes to start a flourishing business. He wants to see the same success for all the talent on his roster. The mission of Chase and co-founder Russell Hartley <coughs> is for the agency to empower the women. The mission for Russell Hartley is to empower the women. I keep seeing so much lately that women are living their life on easy mode, and I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely true. <laughs> on their client list to get paid what they deserve for the content that they put hours of work to produce for their followers and act as a bridge between talent and brands, allowing their talent to focus on what is most important, engaging with their following. <laughs> Shut up. Like I said, slow news day, I guess. There really wasn't anything else happening in LA that week, LA Weekly. This is just a hunch and I have no proof, but I'm like 99% sure that they paid for this. There's no way like a publication was like, yeah, I heard about a new influencer marketing agency. They're gonna, I think they're gonna change the game. No one fucking cares. In LA, there's so many influencer marketing things. Who fucking cares, man? There's a new one every day. And funny enough, at the bottom, it says advertising disclosure. We may receive compensation for some of the links in our stories. So I don't know. I don't know. Also, if you look right here, it says brand partner content. They paid for this shit. But anyways, back to the messages. Arson asks how their management company works and they send this. Our rates are competitive with every other major agency, except we go above and beyond because we're the only agency that actually cares about our talent, especially in this industry. So I know this sh on paper, this should be a good thing. You know, it's, it should be a good thing to say that a company actually cares about the talent. But from my experience, this is a big red flag, a reputable agency or management company, they're not gonna be like, we're the ones who actually care, okay, we care. Like that should just go without saying, they don't have to fucking inflate themselves to say that, you know? That's like the equivalent of like uh, some guy being like, no, I'm a nice guy, you don't have to worry. And then they proceed to do the most heinous shit imaginable to you that will scar you for the rest of your life. Okay, let's read the next part. While you're with us, you get full health insurance, vision and dental insurance, 100% free. Most all medical emergencies are covered too. Okay. <laughs> I am rather concerned about the 100% free thing, cause that is too good to be true. Even in like, we have like universal healthcare up here in Canada, but you still need to like pay sometimes a little bit. So it's like America, I don't think they're fucking covering 100%, dude. <laughs> Maybe they mean it's 100% free because they're just gonna use like the 50% of your income that you give them to pay for the, the health insurance. Maybe that's what they, like you're not paying, but, but you are. And this next line is crazy as well. Literally, if you have a baby, Siren Care covers it. What? What does that mean? <laughs> covers it? Uh. Covers it in what? Huh? Fuck peanut butter? Uh. Okay, our service rates are based on a minimum account volume. If I recall correctly, you're below our minimum, so your rate would be slightly higher until our team brings you up to our minimum requirements and then your rate would automatically be reduced. Yeah, okay, that's another thing that fucking pisses me off with um 
management companies, shitty management companies, they have this thing, like they act like they're doing you a favor by taking an insane amount of your money that you make by creating content. And then no matter what you do, like if you have a video that goes like viral or anything, they're like, could have done it without us. Now you didn't have that video before you signed with us, so it's gotta be us. Like it's so shitty to be like, until our team brings you up to our minimum requirements. You're not doing fucking anything. It's the the person. The person's gonna be more successful if they put the work in and stuff, right? So it's like fucking, that's also another red flag. Next, they uh, continue to promise a bunch of crazy shit. Full health insurance for your pets. What the dog access doing? to a free therapist five days a week if you need it because supposedly mental health is super important to them. You get someone to help you with your taxes and a full-time social media manager. And obviously if something sounds too good to be true, Nine times out of 10, it is. So this whole thing just seems insane to me, but they end this next paragraph with quite the curveball. So all of this and no contracts, we don't want you to feel like a prisoner here, so you can cancel at any time. That's good. Also, the head of the company is a woman. Oh my God. So if you have any questions or problems with any of this, talk to my boss, Leah. I, was, I like how they put the ellipses after that too, like it was like a fucking like mic drop moment. <laughs> and oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Head of the company's a fucking woman. <laughs> yeah, she's a straight up chick. She's abroad, so. Well, she's here, she's not abroad. She is, she's a, she's a fucking, she's a bitch. <laughs> I'm also confused, cause uh, isn't Russell Hartley and the other fucking McLevin McLevin guy, is like, aren't they the founders? Like, aren't they the heads of the company? I'm really confused, cause that article says Russell Hartley, but Russell Hartley isn't even listed in the Siren Agency LinkedIn. I look, he's not in there. Maybe he's like a ghost writer of sorts. I don't know. Emphasis on ghost, cause he's scary. So after this message about the uh, head of the company, Arson responds with a really good question. She asks, but what is the cut for my OnlyFans specifically? And why isn't she listed in the articles? And to that, they respond with, oh, honestly, I don't know. The articles are a little outdated and it's a big company. I just work here. <laughs> Leah's the director and my boss. Every new talent talks to her when they start. And it's like, yo, if the articles are outdated, why you sending them? Why that? Like, that's what you sent to describe the company, dude. Also to be like, I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> then do your, what are you doing then? What the fuck? Hey man, can I just get a Big Mac? <laughs> I don't know, man, I just work here. Yeah, I I know, I, that's why I ordered from you. Can I, can I just get a Big Mac? The ice cream machine is broken also. So in the next message, they go on to say that they make 100% of the money for their clients. They do all the work and they only get paid after their work is done. And right after that, in brackets, they put, we're on the account 24 seven, by the way, which I feel like is a way for them to like qualify themselves to get paid no matter what. Cause they can be like, well, we're on the count all day. So what, do you think we're just fucking doing nothing? Give us all of the money or half of it, I mean. <laughs> Like if Thanos was like a street level criminal. Empty out one half of your pockets. Okay, so there's a few things you need to remember uh, going forward. Number one, they said there's no contract. You don't have to sign a contract or anything. They also say that they only get paid after they do something for you. Like they get you more money. There's also another part here that says, uh, many companies try to take advantage of women in this industry as well. We don't do any of that here. Remember that. So through those messages, a lot of red flags popping up, you know, the insulting of other management companies, offering like an absurd amount of benefits uh, to the point where it's like just hilarious. Also, it's weird that they said the head of the company is a woman when there was no mention of her in the article that's outdated, I guess. And worst of all, they wanna cover your baby in peanut butter. What's up with that? <gasps> and all of this happened to Arson before she even decided to work with them. But I wanted to know what it was like if you do decide to work with them. So I managed to track down a creator named Vega, who was actually once signed with Siren Agency. I reached out to them to see if they were open to talk about their experience. And luckily they were down and they had some pretty fucking crazy stories to tell. So here is that interview. Sorry in advance if the audio is a little weird. I recorded it before a show in San Francisco in a random little green room and I forgot my mic in the hotel. So I hope it sounds okay, but yeah. Here's the interview. Okay, hello. Um, do you wanna just, uh, first off, do you wanna like introduce yourself? Um, sure. Hi, my name is Vega. My social media handle is Vega Moon. People know me as, uh, I guess, Vega Moon. Well, thanks again for uh, sitting down and talking about this. Um, to just confirm, you were, were you, you were signed with Siren Agency? Like you, they sent like a, did they send like a contract? 
Yep. It's like an official thing, okay. So all of this and no contracts, we don't want you to feel like a prisoner here. Do they send like a contract? Yep. Like an official thing, okay. Did they reach out to you? Yeah, so someone named with, she's like a, I think she has something like 300,000 followers or something, she's verified. I think she does like music. Um, she reached out to me and like told me that she works for like a modeling agency that uh, travel like covers all like travel fees, uh, like gets you brand deals, uh, helps you get like brand ambassadorships, will pay for photo shoots and stuff. So then I gave her my phone number and then spoke with an agent and then I spoke with like a director and then I spoke with a social media manager and one other person. So, how long were you with Siren? I stayed with them for about like two weeks um, because they approached me as a modeling agency and then it turned into OnlyFans management. Like I thought they were gonna take over like my socials, like, you know, like my modeling, like Instagram and Twitter and stuff. But then when the director called me, it out of nowhere turned into like strictly like OnlyFans management. It was, it was all very weird. Um, there was like a lot of like weird things that happened. So I left with them because they sent me my first invoice, which is 30% of all gross income. Of, yeah, so Damn. the thing about it was weird. Like, like on the phone, like they really just like push you. Oh, just like sign, just like sign, it's fine. Like we keep talking, just like sign this. And like verbally, like, I thought it was only 30% of net and then it turned into 30% of gross with like all this other stuff Which didn't even make sense because if I'm having my own traffic and stuff like why am I paying you? Yeah, they're not doing anything So why would they get a cut of it? The they had four people 24 hours working on my account from uh, One person from the Philippines one person from Arkansas and two people from Oregon like they were talking to people 24 7 Um, and it was mm. great at first um, but then a fan like a really obsessed fan who like I never even answer like asked them for my real name and they gave them my legal name like not oh my god well government name and I freaked out on the director she was like oh I'm so sorry like that's unprofessional I'll fix that right now and then hours went by and they were still like allowing this person to use the name so I hopped onto the message and was like hey I didn't actually mean to give you this name this is like my twitch name I, like make up this whole thing it's nice to know that they're paying attention to the to the details you know especially when it comes to people's privacy the director her name is um Lee uh she just like didn't care at all and then when they sent me my invoice they sent me like two hundred dollars more than I owed them them and it didn't like the math made no sense so I, I emailed them and no one answered me <laughs> so when I got that invoice it was like so much money and I was like this is like no so I texted Lee and I said hey I just sent her exactly what I sent in the email she was like oh my god I'm so sorry we're editing that right now like instantly and then they sent me like an invoice that still was like too much money in my opinion I feel um, like any invoice for them is too much money like any amount is uh, <laughs> for them is too much yeah, but yeah because the thing is is that if you don't pay them it's uh um, hundred dollars every day as a late fee so I got scared literally <laughs> thinking that I was gonna like they were gonna like tr you know and I was like I did not want to give them the money that I gave them I gave them like four hundred dollars oh my like, gosh that's so just, stressful yeah, well yeah I know what you mean I feel like when someone it says there's like a late fee you, you put your trust in it to be like oh I guess yeah you're right you know yeah I was just scared honestly because I thought like of course they would, like, try to like sue me or something so like at that point like that day like I was like okay no I'm not working with you anymore like you know because that was the good thing like you didn't like I could have like had them for a week and been like no I'm done right I guess that's good so went through like my unblocked on OnlyFans and unblocked people who were like extremely inappropriate and one guy I literally had to like write change his name on OnlyFans and like say that he he is a p do not unblock him. Oh my gosh. I saw that he had tipped me a lot of money, so they unblocked him to try and get him to give me more money. More money, because that's more money for, for them. So, and then finally I was like, you know what, you doxed me to a, a customer, which is so dangerous, and this guy like still messages me. I haven't even used them since like the second week of September, and this man still messages me like every single day, like asking me where I am. Jesus. Like, that's fucking crazy. I can't believe that. They fucking did, that's fucking insane. You'd think an OnlyFans manager company would not have the foresight to you know not do that right so I, I was reading through like text message uh, conversation between them and they were saying that they don't they don't take any money from you unless they make you more money 
And if they, once they start doing things for you, so did they actually do like anything? They just messaged people like 24 seven. Like they had four different people that logged in the places that I told you, the Philippines, one person was like Arkansas or something or Alabama, something with an A, and then two people from Oregon. And, but they, they like, they wouldn't post for me. So like I had to make like posts and then they wanted every, like every Monday, they wanted like all this content. That's so strange. Did they, did they also promise you like, like have free health insurance and shit? Yeah. Like it's called like siren care. It's like, it's basically like Medicaid kind of like all the basics that come with it. Um, but only if you're making like, a, like there was like a $10,000 mark that you had to like reach monthly to like get oh. it. And then it like the more money you made, like the more things from health insurance you got from them. And then see, this was like the other weird thing that I was like, okay, this is like, this is giving me kind of like a bad like vibe. Like they allegedly have content meetups where either in like Bali or like Dubai or like Mexico or wherever, where like the company rents like a big house and like they have all these content creators come to like make content, get photo shoots. But then when I was talking to the director, she's like, okay, are you comfortable making boy girl content? Like, and I was like, uh, I'm not, are you, you guys aren't a agency. What, what is that? You know what all I mean? Right. Like, like it went from being like, oh, this is just like modeling. Like, you know, you'll do like editorial or lifestyle shoots to, oh, we're actually an OnlyFans management to, oh, we throw these like events where, you know, if you want to like make content with like guys, you can. In so that- countries. Like it's, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so like it just didn't. It's a common thing is like they say they are one thing and then they're just none of it ever. It's great that you got out of it. Like there's, I feel like, you know, cause who knows what they could have done if it was like a super long contract and stuff, but thank you for, for sharing and hopping on. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do appreciate you sharing um, your experience and everything. I'll put your, you know, your socials and everything if people want to, you know, go uh, support. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool. Have a great thank, day. Thank you, Vega. Bye. So, uh, yeah, doxing, asking for seemingly random amounts of money, Russell Hartley, the list of red flags is pretty long. Now that I think about it, and like know more about the company, I feel like the one thing they got right was their name. Like their name Siren Agency makes a lot of sense. You know, in Greek mythology, sirens, you know, they would like sing beautiful songs to like lure sailors to their death. And just like a siren, Siren Agency is promising a lot of like these amazing benefits, a pretty song. So they can just ruin your life and fucking drown you in payments, I guess. And look, I don't wanna make any like wild claims here or anything, but I just wanted to shed some light on this because I feel like this happens so much in the online content creation space and probably way more frequently in like the adult content industry. I think my one message to people, if you're a content creator and like a management wants to sign you and stuff, know your worth. Okay. If you're talented and you have an audience, that is that is rare and it is and it is special and I don't think you should sell yourself short, okay? And I guess the main message of this video is uh just do your research. Always get like the shortest contract, you know, so you can get out if it's not working. And also never work with Russell Hartley. Why would you do that? Okay, well that's it. I I um I just wanted to talk about this really quick. If you enjoy the video, please press the like button because believe it or not, one like equals one baby covered in peanut butter. Uh. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of this whole thing. I know it's pretty fucking crazy. Quite the development in the Russell uh, Russell Hartley lore. And if any other people who are signed to Siren see this video, reach out to me, message me if anything crazy happened. I wanna, I wanna know it all, okay? And I wanna fucking uh, dig deeper maybe uh, if there's more stuff that comes out, so. But yeah, press the subscribe button because as soon as you do, you become a valued citizen of Curtistown. If you didn't know, Curtistown is the best place to live in the world and I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me. It is the law. Instagram and Twitter in the description, all that bullshit. You know what to do. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I would stick around, but I have to go, unfortunately. I got to go see if they fixed the ice cream machine. <laughs>